Cleveland Media's Mining Weekly Online is talking to Neil Pretorius, the CEO of DRD Gold. You're talking about a possible buyback. What is the thinking behind that? What we use as a measure is uh, just what are the independents saying the, the share ought to be worth. I don't think there's a management team in the world who thinks that their share is overvalued. We all seem to think that it's undervalued, but that's not our measure. We look at some of the analysts' report, uh, most of them uh, who are closely following the stock and who are doing a bit of fundamental analysis are recommending a buy. Uh, so it is significantly lower than what the consensus view, uh, value view is at this stage. And, and while that is there, we consider that to be a, a favorable market for a buyback. And we're sitting on a bit of surplus cash, so we may well, may well want to do that, depending on what the market does over the next few months. This is our eighth year <coughs> of paying a dividend. We didn't uh, distribute all of our cash. We try not to overcomplicate the decision or the toss-up between do we distribute dividends or do we buy back shares. I think typically what we would do is, you know, have a look at the the analysis. If we way below what uh, what the uh, what the independent voice out there is saying, we, we should be worth, you know, then typically we'd want to buy back some shares and maybe make it more attractive for the longer term shareholders. If, if the share is going to be kicked around by gamblers, then you know we're not going to just hang out there and and say do with us what you want. Then then we will start looking after the interests of the longer term shareholder, the ones who base their investment decisions on fundamental analysis. Because you know how difficult it is to go to, to, uh, to the, uh, the longer term market, those who actually do a bit of analysis of, of your business and say that this is something that's worth your while to invest in. And then they get taken apart by, by, by the trend trading or by the, uh, the, the, the technical trends out there. So, so we want to see if we can just maybe shrink that pool. And yes, there would be some sacrifice and liquidity, which some might say, would be bad, but heck, I mean, why why not settle for four or five uh, longer-term shareholders that that accumulate when the market is favourable, as opposed to just getting randomly kicked around like a dented coke can? We're very happy to see the turnaround of the plant back to stable state uh, without the introduction of our new technology, and then also very pleased with the way that the technology then kicked in. What we're finding is that the the flotation circuit is uh, taking something out of the mix that is enhancing the extraction efficiencies of the, the lower grade circuit. So we're definitely seeing a bit of upside there. And uh, we, we, we've now also converted the uh, uh, carbon and pulp section of the high grade to carbon and leach. And uh, we, we're seeing a bit of an uptick there as well. The dollar price of gold sometimes depresses us, but looking at the rand price of gold, what is it at the moment? Well, I think it was touching 500,000 rand a kilo a few days ago. And it's hovering around the, the 480s, 485 thereabouts. It, it's still a very attractive rand price, uh, make no mistake. And just tell us about the cash that you generated this year. It seemed quite impressive. Yes, Martin, we're very pleased with the, with the cash position. Uh, I mean, our, our focus is very much a cash flow focus. The capital that we invest, uh, we invest with a very short, uh, short time horizon uh, insofar as payback is concerned uh, because of the nature of our business. We paid back just over 130 million rand in, uh, in debt in the last 12 months. And on top of that, we made just over 120 million in, in free cash. So the free cash position I think went up from 208 million rand to 324 million rand. Your dividend was lifted as well? We're distributing our entire headline earnings, 10 cents per share, as a dividend. I was also quite impressed with your sensitivity towards the near mine communities and the amount of money you're putting in there. Social value really worth investing in is uh, education of the youth in particular. Uh, we think that uh, the existing infrastructure is a little bit under-resourced and under -staffed. So we spend quite a bit of money and, and time and effort on the education of the youth and we're seeing it uh, uh, yielding some dividends. On the environmental side, one's got to be sensitive too. And not only because uh, you know, that's the every NGO's favorite topic, but because you don't want to be the, uh, the company that uh, that, that uh, reduces the quality of life of those surrounding communities. You want to enhance the quality of life. And we've seen some really good results on dust emissions in particular, where we set out the target a few years ago to every year at least half the number of dust emissions. And out of a 1,500 measurements that we took this year, we exceeded the, the statutory level or limit for dust exceedances. That's particles in the air only 31 times. Now, I still believe that's 31 times too many. And once we vegetated the entire footprint, that'll disappear altogether. But that's very much our focus. That was Creamer Media's Mining Weekly Online talking to Neil Pretorius, the CEO of DRD Gold.